I, I confess, I'd, I'd known about Dan before I'd really met Dan. Uh, <laughs> uh, but there was a, a, a particular introduction at my uh, daughter's wedding back in 2017. Uh, when he was really winding up my sister-in-law and it was hilarious <laughs> at, at the tables. Um, but uh, since then we've kind of uh, known one another. But it was in 2019, um, pre-Covid, remember that? Um, uh, and uh, Dan just had it on his heart to invite us to the conference, um, 50 year celebration of Bath Church. Yeah. And, um, and come and join with us. And they just hosted us beautifully. And as I've said to you guys before, there's a few new faces here. There was a moment where um, we just kind of went, do you know what? This is our tribe. But they, they, they were speaking in a language. Like, the, there were people st stood on the stage speaking and saying stuff. And I was thinking that if I was there, that's how I would have wanted to say it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, and so there, there was just a synergy and a connection. And so over, a, over food, of course it was. Um, <laughs> uh, we, we had a couple of meals over that weekend with Dan and um, his wife, Fee. And we just asked questions like, so what's live streams about? How, if, because we, we've been seeking, I mean really, really seeking. Uh, where are we, 2019, 15? So four, four years of really searching out for the right people that we could partner with and be accountable to and feel that like we're in fellowship with some way. For us, our own personal accountability, because it's really important in this year, um, and, and then for us as a community, as a church. And uh, the, the, the overriding thing was there was, it was, there was no financial thing, no contract to sign, no kind of expectations. It was just like, we do relationship, get to know us. And I was like, this is, this is us. This is how we love to do stuff. It's just kind of hang out together and get to know you guys, you know? Um, and, uh, and, and so it, it clicked and we said, yeah, we, we want to get to know you. And then COVID hit. <laughs> um, and that's quite difficult, both in terms of local stuff and across an ocean, because Dad's living in Chicago, well, just outside. And uh, there was a great idea that actually, actually started pre-COVID of just getting all the church leaders in the, in the stream to get together and, and the ministries and get together online every other week and say, how's it going? Let's hear you. So everyone gets an opportunity to talk and be encouraged and they prophesy to each other and they speak and pray and support. And we, that was a lifeline to us, really was. Which is why we are so passionate about making sure that everybody knows what that looks like um, and, and feel connected in. It's been a real shame that COVID basically stopped that for a couple of years because we would have been a lot further down the road had that not happened. However, here we are today. In an important season for us as a church, because Larissa and I are kind of adapting our role. And so Dan said, look, I want to come and be with you. So would you just honour him and welcome him? Because I think it's Steal this. Yeah. Oh, oh that great oh, start. Look at that. Already knocking things over. Making a mess. That, that one does come up as well. Oh, this one does? No, the other one. Oh, it does? Okay. You wanted it. Good morning, good morning, everyone. It's so good to see you all. I'm so glad I'm here. I uh, this is just I walked in, I just felt emotional as well. I just feel like I I have this privilege of being in this with you in a very pivotal part of your history. Um, as we pulled up in the car, Larissa said, uh, we were talking about George Verwa and OM, Operation Mobil Mobilization. And, and I said, yeah, it was so sad that uh, George died. I tried to get to see him in England um, just about a week before, um, and he was in hospital. I wasn't able to see him. And then I came in and I met David, who was on the Dulos. Both of them. Both of them, Dulos and Logos. And I sat down, I'm just talking to different ones of you, and then Simon here, Simon, could you just, could you, would you mind standing, sir? This man, I, I think he's the, uh, the longest standing member of this church. Is this correct? Yeah. Well, no, there are others that are sort of equal. Okay. 
but you're here, so they don't need to know that. Oh yeah, but they're not here, so yes, it's, it's definitely Simon wins. But Simon, I just want to say thank you to you, sir, just for taking the time to write the history of the church here and all the details. Just so appreciate it. And, and I thought, Lord, what's going on? There's all this people who've gone on. And here at Hebrews, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us run the race with perseverance, the race that has been marked out for us. And I just sense there are markers on our journey. I said to Simon that God said to Moses, record the stages of Israel's journey. And I believe that we are a marker right now in the history of this church. And the great thing is God is nowhere near done with you. I believe this is a, see when we're in transition, a boxer when he's in transition, he's most vulnerable. <coughs> but you know also when we're most vulnerable, we're most teachable. And in this time, it's tender. You could feel Stephen Larissa, I could feel it, just their tenderness, their vulnerable. You as a church, is a vulnerable time. What's going to happen? But just having met with your amazing leaders and elders this week, just some of them, and Tim and Susie from India yesterday for several hours, everybody wants to go forward. The best is yet. To come. Amen. God hasn't finished with you. In, the second, in, in Corinthians, second Corinthians, it says, God always, everyone say always, always. leads us in ultimate triumph. Yes. He always leads us. We always go from glory to glory. And so I just want to say it's a privilege to be here with you this morning. It's great to have my friend Tim here. Tim is a vicar. He doesn't, he doesn't like calling him, let me call him that, but he's a lot older than me as well, so it's great to <laughs> Travel. I'm, I'm in my 40s, he's in his 50s, and, um, so, and I have the microphone and you can't hear him. So, uh, he, but just, he was on a sabbatical uh, recently and I got to know him. You know, when you meet people, sometimes you feel like you've known them for years and years and years. And uh, Tim's like that, it's just, there's just a joining in God. And so it's just been fun hanging out with him while I'm uh, back in the good old Britain. I think I love about Britain. One, I grew up in Bath, I'm from Bath. Um, and I was born and raised. I just, I love England. I love the heritage. I love the history. And, and uh, I'm going to talk more about this maybe today. But can we just pray before I start? To, uh, yes. I believe I've got the word of the Lord for you this morning. Yes. I'm not just going to preach a message. I believe it's got the word of the Lord. And it's going to, it's going to encourage you. Because we all need encouraging. Yes. Amen. Yes. Can you just put your hands out like this? Because for me to do what I do, I can't do it without the Holy Spirit. Yes. <laughs> so I, it's going to be a rubbish meeting if the Holy Spirit doesn't come. So Holy Spirit, will you come and fill this room? We thank you for your word. We thank you that this book that we have is your voice in print. We thank you that in fact that this is the only book we'll ever read where you, the author, is always present. And we thank you that as we read it today and as we just glean some of these principles that we would become more like you, that you would encourage us, you'd lift our hands. <laughs> Lord, I ask that your word that is alive and living and active will actually meet us and touch us right where we're at. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you know each one of us better than we know ourselves. You know what we need, you know what we want. And I ask that Holy Ghost, you would come in the way that only you can. And in this next few moments that we're here together, as life central, that you would speak to us. That you would correct us like a chiropractor. You'd adjust us. And you, thank you that you never, ever condemn us. But you do convict us because you love us so that we can be changed yeah. to become more like you. So as we read your word, I ask that you would take root and bear fruit. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 In Ezekiel chapter 1, it says that Ezekiel said, I saw wheels within wheels, and the Spirit of God was in the wheels, and then I saw the four faces of God. Does anyone know what those four faces were? The faces of a lion. The face, anyone else? Of an eagle. The face of a man. And the face of? An ox. So I think it's fair to say that there is something that we can learn about God's nature about these four faces. The man is obvious, but there's something about an ox. The Bible talks about the wild ox anointing. Mm -hmm. That there is a strength in an ox 
There's power in an ox. I was watching David Attenborough one night and watching the wolves try and take down um, this huge, these, they're like buffalo, but like oxes from the ox family. And, and, you know, David Attenborough's voice, you know, and he goes quiet and he says, and the chase is on. And if they can spook the ox, if they can spook the buffalo, he can get, they can make them run. And if he can get them to run, he can get them to disperse. And if he can get them to disperse, they can pick off the weak ones. And so this is what happened. They spook the ox and they start to run. And then it's like all of a sudden, you could, this, this isn't in the Bible or David Attenborough didn't say this, but it's like, hey, Bert, why are you running? It's like, I don't know who you were running. You know, these oxen talking to each other. We ox, they were for wolves. Ox don't run from wolves. And it's like they suddenly stopped, turn around, and as soon as they stopped, the, the wolves bow their heads and just stop chase. There's something about an ox we can learn about the very nature of God. Lions. It's pretty kind of obvious, but we all know that lion is, is known as the king of the jungle. But why? Because it's, it's not the fastest animal. It, it, it's not the biggest animal. It's not the, got the biggest bite. The hippo's got a much more powerful bite. It's not got the longest claws. It's not fastest. It can't climb trees as, as good as other animals. So why is it the king of the jungle? There's one reason, and it's this, because he believes he is. <laughs> as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. The Bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion. Then there's the man, and then there's the eagle. And that's what I want to talk to you about this morning. There is something about the, an eagle that we can learn about the very nature of God. And I just, as I, I just felt excited and stirred by this, by the, how much in the Bible is about eagles? So, if you have a Bible, could you turn to Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy, chapter 32, Deuteronomy 32, I'm reading from the NIV, and I'm reading verse 11, are you ready? Like an eagle stirs up its nest and hovers over its young that spreads its wings to catch them and carries them on its pinions. Wow. Like an eagle, everyone say eagle. eagle. I just need to know you're awake because, you know, I've got jet lag, so you have to be awake too. So if I just know you're awake, then I'll be awake. And I know that you're engaged and then I won't have to repeat, you know, I'll, I'll go faster and we'll get out quicker. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm reading really again. So, like an eagle stirs. Everyone say stirs. stirs. And here's if you're maybe this is you today. There's three things I want to talk about eagles, and you're gonna I trust that from praying that you're gonna find yourself in one of these. But here we have a mother eagle. And the Bible says, as a mother eagle stirs up the nest, what she's actually doing is she is breaking up. The nest. She is clawing away at the base of the eagle's nest. And these little eaglets, imagine if they are in the nest, and suddenly mum comes back, normally with food, but today she's gone a little cray cray and she's just starting to claw up the floor of their house. Like, Mum, what's going on? And suddenly they're starting to see the ground hundreds of feet down, potentially. Way up in these high trees. And the, what the mother will then do is she will push the eaglets out, causing the eagles to fall. And then she will swoop down, as we just read in the Bible, and the mother eagle will catch those eaglets on her back and take them back to the top of the nest and then hit repeat. And she'll do this seven times, stirring, everyone say stirring, as an eagle nest stirs, breaks up the home, breaks up the nest for one purpose and one purpose only, because eaglets are destined to fly. And God who is like the face of an eagle. There's something about the very nature of God we can learn by, about eagles. Is And I want to suggest and present to you and submit to you today that I, you might be in a season where you feel like that which was once 
my greatest safety is now being taken away. And I want to suggest to you that perhaps it's not the devil, but it's actually God. That actually God is saying, I'm going to make you feel vulnerable and I'm going to push you out. And yes, you're going to hold on for dear life. Why is this happening, God? Why are you allowing this? Here we go again. But actually God is saying, because I've got a destiny for you and it's actually to take flight. So <coughs> the first thing I want to talk about is a stirring. Everyone say stirring. Okay, now I just want you to know, warn you, this, this, this next point gets a little bit worse before it gets better. Okay? So you're like this. So don't leave like in the middle because it's going to get better at the end. And then we're going to pray and God's going to do something amazing. All right? So the second thing is the stripping away. Everyone say stripping. So the first is a stirring. There's a stirring. Ever been there where you feel like, just put your hands up if you feel like vulnerable sometimes. You feel vulnerable like, oh gosh. I don't know what's happening. Read, read, go back and read Deuteronomy 32, verse 11, as an eagle stirs up its, its nest. But then there's something else that happens. I and mean, if you're writing notes or you want to turn there, you can turn to Psalm 103. We're going to read it together. Psalm 103. Psalm of David, as I read this, you'll be like, oh, I know this psalm. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, all my innermost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, all my soul. And forget none of his benefits. He forgives all of my sin. He redeems my life from the pit. And he crowns my life with love and compassion. He satisfies our desires with good things. Ready? So that your youth, our youth, is renewed like the eagles. Wait, what? What? How does the psalmist know about renewing the youth? Isn't it great, though? The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4 that outwardly we are wasting away, but inwardly we're being renewed day by day. So outwardly, things are getting... We get older, I've noticed that. You know, you, know, you bend down and pick something up and you see if there's anything else you can do while you're down there. It's just like... Oh, I used to be a gymnast, but I know... Don't laugh. I, mean, was, I was a gymnast. Um, but yeah, now I just, if I move too quickly, I see stars. So yeah, I, I can definitely relate to that. But he renews our youth like the eagles. He renews, he renews our youth like David said. He renews our youth. So David knew something about the renewing of an eagle. What needed to be renewed like an eagle? Well, again, I love watching these shows, David Attenborough and different uh, documentaries on animals, especially when God is trying to speak to me about his very nature, about a certain subject, I'll hone in and lock in and study it. And scientists are from around the world have got, done lots of different studies. Some of them agree, some of them disagree. Some of them are like, that's not proven, and, but I'm preaching and this is, sounds great. So, but this is, this, is, this is research. You can go and do, do you can Google it yourself. But many eagles live to about 50 years old. Do you know that? Remember, we're talking about the nature of God, right? There's something about if Ezekiel saw one of the faces of God was an eagle in Ezekiel chapter 1, is there something that we can learn about the very nature of God about eagles and how, if so, does that apply to us today? And the first thing we just read is in Deuteronomy, he stirs up our nets, but now he renews our youth like the eagles. So what needs to be renewed? And as I watched David Attenborough and others, they talked about how an eagle, whilst they live to about 50, many eagles are about 30 years old, go through a season of molting. Everyone say molting. And has anybody heard any study on this? Anyone know anything about the molting eagle? Because if you don't, you're going to love this because it's just so fascinating. But here's what happens when a molting eagle molts. The first thing is its beautiful feathers fall out. Now this is a majestic bird, isn't it? You ever seen an eagle? It's just there's something majestic about an eagle. But their feathers fall out. 
Remember, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Just remember. It was like, great, where's this going? I, I, I was doing fine until I came in here this morning. But can you imagine being an eagle and the very thing that makes you beautiful is now falling away and you don't really know why? Did something happen? Did I do something wrong? Why are my feathers falling out? Why is the very thing that made me look beautiful now I just starting to feel ugly? But not only do I feel ugly and do I feel unattractive and do I feel that the very thing that made me majestic is now going, but I can't fly. The very thing that I was destined to do, the very thing that started in my life when my mother stirred up my nest and pushed me out, causing me to do the thing I was destined to do, now I'm unable to do because my feathers are falling out. So number one, their feathers fall out. Number two, their eyesight begins to go. Do you know, for a, multi a healthy eagle, an eagle can see a rabbit over a mile away. But when the eagle begins to molt, the eagle actually starts to lose its sight. And I don't know if you've been there before or you're there now or you can remember or you know someone else is going through this. You can't quite figure it out. But what happened to that person? They used to be able to fly. They used to be able to see. Have you ever been really prophetic in your life and you just, man, I can just see it. Or you've been a visionary. I can see it. I just know what to do. It's just, there's a grace. There's an anointing. There's just, wow, I just know what to do. It's like, how does, where does this even come from? I just can just see. And then suddenly you go through a season or you've been through a season or you know someone who's going through a season where just suddenly things become dim. This is what happens in the life of a molting eagle. And number three, their beak becomes callous. And because their beak becomes callous, it, it gets this heavy, you know, skin around it, which becomes hard like bone, stopping it to be able to even, because it can't hunt, because it can't really fly. But now not only can it not fly, but it can't really eat because it's so heavy. And because it's so heavy, the eagle's head actually begins to bow. Number four, the talons get the same thing as the beak. They, they become callous and they can't. And so they're just kind of stationary in there. They're there. Number five is their hearing goes. So not only can they not see properly, but they can't actually hear. Have you ever been in a place where you just feel like I could hear God so clearly and now for some reason I can't and I don't know why? Or maybe you've been there and you can relate to this. It's like, this is the language for what you went through. Or maybe, you know, somebody else is going through this, but there's this sense of, I just can't hear right now. And to make things worse, they actually let off a horrible odor. I know that's none of us. But the eagle is, they, they, there's that a feeling of almost like shame. Like, I, I don't really want to even be around myself. I don't know what's happened to me. I don't know what happened. I could see, I could hear, I could hunt, I could fly. I felt beautiful. I felt majestic. Surely that was what I was born for. I was destined to fly, and now here I am. And number seven, these eagles, they actually find isolation with other birds that are like them. So these eagles will actually isolate themselves on rock faces away from the other birds but can relate to birds that are just like them and they if you see the pictures in magazines or you study this you'll see they look a right sorry state all disheveled feeling sorry heavy heavy heads bowed heads and shaking because they can't even keep themselves from getting so cold and then suddenly everyone say suddenly I love the word suddenly. You know, in, in Acts chapter 2, then suddenly there came the sound of a blowing of a violent rushing wind and, the whole, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting and tongues of fire came to rest on them and whoa, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. I love the word suddenly. You know, God rarely moves immediately, but he always moves suddenly. God doesn't, rarely does exactly what we want him to do in the time that we think he should do what he should do, what we think he should do. He really does that, but when he does move, he does move suddenly. It's like, oh gosh, wow, God's here. <laughs> and this third thing, I mean, this is where it gets good. Everyone say, it's going to get good. Yeah. Okay, we're going to go up now. This is the third stage. This is the third thing that we can learn about eagles. And it is 
the strengthening. Everyone say strength. So there's a stirring, there's a stripping away, and then there is a strengthening. And here's where it gets good, because there is a suddenly, and the suddenly comes from way, way above them. And these molting eagles sitting on the rock face, huddling up together, stinking together, can't eat together, they've just got no hope together, really, really sorry state of affairs. And then there's this sound of screeching, this sound of screaming. And some scientists say it is the screams of encouragement. It is the screams of other eagles, eagles that are older than 30 years old, older than just over halfway, and it is the screams of eagles that have gone through the molting season themselves and they are screaming encouragement over the molting eagles. And what they will actually do, check this, this is so amazing, is that they will actually go and hunt for the molting eagles. They will go and get food, they'll go and get fresh meat and they will bring it and they will drop it next to the molting eagles because the eagles that can't fly so they can nourish them and feed them. They will cover them with their wings does that sound familiar? Psalm 91, they will cover the multi eagles, these older eagles with their wings in the storm and protect them from the rain. Whew! I told you it was going to get better. And so suddenly there's this, there's this strengthening going on. This is it's just happening. Okay, Isaiah, 6, Isaiah chapter 40. Let's read this together. And I'm going to pray for you. Isaiah chapter 40. Someone quoted Isaiah 61 earlier. Who quoted Isaiah? Someone prayed it. Was it you who prayed it? About beauty for ashes? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me too. I'm going to just go off my notes for a minute. We'll come back to this, but I just thought to say this. Preach the good news. To preach good news to the poor. That's what you were talking about. Yeah, that's right. To bind up the brokenhearted, yeah. to set captives free. To bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, and the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit. It's a spirit of despair. Yeah. And we're anointed to break the spirit of despair. But I want to just say this to you, and I feel just, I felt this for, just to say this. Mm. Then he says, Isaiah says, and they will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. They will be, yeah. who was, who's they? The people who have got set free. Yeah. So there's actually a gear shift. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to do something, to bind up the brokenhearted, to set captives free, to preach good news to the poor. By the way, it's not the day of vengeance when Jesus stands up and he, re he reads that passage. Remember in Luke chapter 4? He leaves out the day of vengeance. He stops right there. He puts a full stop. So it's just, he's just talking about the setting, preaching good news, setting captives free. But go back to Isaiah 61. And they will be called the oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord for the display of this splendor. Who's they? The people that got set free. So when we are talking about um, the, the local vision for the church and how you're reaching your community, yeah. we're praying, we're setting people free, but we're also prophesying. Hey, by the way, what was that couple called? Dan and Sharon. Dan and Sharon. Different Dan. Yeah. Dan and Sharon. <laughs> I didn't stop people coming to the meeting. I was like, why? <laughs> um, Dan and Sharon. But start to prophesy over Dan and Sharon. You will be the planting of the Lord. You're going to be the display of his splendor. Your testimony of being set free is going to be a voice into this, into this city. Yeah. And actually seeing people the way they should become. Yes. Yeah. Mm. When Jesus saw Peter, he said, ah, you're Peter. Yeah. Thou art, thou shalt be. Why did Jesus know who he was? Because he, this will mess with this is a bit deep, but he came from the Lamb, right? <laughs> he was a apostle of the Lamb outside of time. Anyway, whatever. Let's go back to Isaiah chapter 40. Right. Stick to your notes, Dan. Isaiah chapter 40. Um, do you not know? Have you not heard? Verse 28. The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator to the ends of the earth. He will not grow weary. Can I just say to you that weariness is not from God? The Bible says, don't grow weary. What's that? Two weeks ago you were preaching that. Yes, that's true. Amen. Don't grow weary in doing, don't, weariness grows. Don't grow weary. I, the Lord, does not grow weary. Jesus says in Matthew 11, come to me, all of you who are weary, and I'll give you strength. Daniel chapter 7 says, 
Before the Ancient of Days comes, the enemy will come to weary the saints. Everyone say weary. Weary, weary. weary means to make old before it's time. This is all connected to this thing with the multi-eagle to make all before it's time. I want to suggest to you it's a ploy of the enemy. Weariness is not tiredness. Jesus was tired. Tiredness, you you need to rest. Weariness of the soul, and it doesn't go away from a good night's sleep. I believe, you're mature, so I'm going to say, I just believe it's demonic. Weariness is demonic. It's to, I, the enemy will come to wear down the saints, another translation says, to wear them down. You ever just feel worn down? It's, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities of darkness. There's an enemy that wants to take you out. And that's why it's good, good to find your center in the morning and stand up and say, God is good, as we already declared. Lord, this is a good day to be alive. I'm going to lift up my head. I'm in the middle of a race, and there's markers that have been marked out for me, and I'm going to finish my race, and I'm going to finish well. This church is going to finish well and hand on to the baton to another generation. And that's why I was so thankful for Simon um, for writing the church history because it, it, he's writing to a generation that he'll never meet. He's writing to a generation that I'll never meet, you'll probably never meet, because some will say, where did God plant this church? What's the history? What are the milestones? What are the markers along the way? Run the race that has been marked out for you. It's been marked out for you. God has already marked out this race. And I just want you to say these haven't been <coughs> wasted years. And it's, and it's sad, and it's, it's because Steve and Larissa are just such precious people. I love these two. And they've just done an amazing job. They are awesome pastors. They're a tremendous shepherd. Can I just say as well this? It's, I've led really big churches and really small churches. It's a lot harder to lead a small church than a big church. Because you have to wear so many hats. Can I just talk to you like I would talk to other pastors? You know, you have to be a realtor, you know, a state agent. Be good at property and you have to be good at like, a, you know, Steve left early this morning to come and set up. And so he has to be a PA guy with Andy and, and then a sound guy and then a worship leader and then a child psychologist and then, um, and then uh, a, a, a theologian and then a great communicator, of course, and a marriage counselor. And, and suddenly it's, you have to wear all these hats. Can you see that? But as a church grows bigger, you can have staff for all those things. It's like, oh yeah, I just give myself to the word and the prayer and prayer like the Bible says. And so I just, <laughs> so I just want to just, just let you know behind the scenes that they would never tell you that because they're just wonderful people and they would never complain. But it is, there's a lot to do and you're constantly, it's like gears on a bike. You're going to first gear, to second gear, and then third gear, and then fifth gear, and sixth, back to first. <laughs> And in a day, someone can die, and then someone gets saved, and someone walks away from their faith, and you're just changing gear, and you've got to do this. I'm just saying that because you may not know that, but it is easier in many respects. Different challenges, bigger challenges. But when there is an enemy also that wants to wear down the saints, it makes it harder. Anyway, should we get to the good part? Because I feel like you're ready for the good part. You're like, please get to the good part. Yeah, okay. I said, do you not know, have you not heard that the Lord is the everlasting God, created the universe. He will not grow tired or weary. And his understanding no one can fathom, for he gives strength to the weary and he increases the power of the weak. For even youth grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. But, everyone say but. But, but those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. So there is a soaring. There is a screaming. There is a strengthening. So this bird that starts with his mother stirring up the nest and kicking him out because he's destined to fly. And then later, not all, but some go through this horrible molting season. There's another season. And it's the season not just David knew about, about eagles, but Isaiah knew about. Suddenly Isaiah comes about renewing their strength like eagles, like mounting on wings like eagles. And the, what happens to an eagle after the other eagles that have been through this come and protect them and drop meat to feed them? There's two things that 
they must do these multi eagles. <coughs> Number one, they have to lie on the rock. <laughs> Number two, it has to be in the sun. No pun intended, they have to lie on the rock. They have to spread out their wings on the rock face. Jesus is the rock. He said to Peter, which means rock, I will build my church on the rock. When we lie down and we surrender everything in, a, in, that, in, that, in that posture of complete surrender, and we allow the sun, S-U-N, S-O-N, to beam down on us when we're going through a season where we've been weary, a season where we couldn't see, a season where we couldn't hear, a season where we couldn't fly, a season where we couldn't hunt, where we once devoured the word and getting fresh revelation, but it feels like shame has got in and our head has come down. About. That's why the Bible says, lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be lifted up, you everlasting doors. Let the King of glory come in. Who is this King of glory? He's the Lord, strong and mighty. It's important, church, that we are, he is the lifter of our heads. You know, gates are people with authority. Gates have authority. Heads is headship, they're people with authority. So the Bible is saying, lift up your head, you people with authority. Be lifted up, you everlasting doors. It's important that our heads don't go down. That as God renews us, like the eagles, that callus begins to fall off and it actually happens. And underneath that beak is a new fresh beak. The eyes that couldn't see begin to renew. The feathers start to grow back. The talons, the callus on the talons fall off. This bird that couldn't hear can hear again. And then this beautiful bird, majestic again. For the next part of his life, scientists will say after this process, they will walk off that rock face high above the landscape. And they'll wait for the updraft and then they will lock their wings. Then beautiful new feathers flapping in the wind. And when the updraft comes of the wind, they will just lean in. And their strength would have been renewed like the eagles so that they can soar again. And I just want to prophesy over you that you may feel vulnerable right now. But when we're most vulnerable, we're most teachable. And if you'll listen to the voice of God right now, he's going to speak. And the eyes are going to be renewed. Just close your eyes for a moment. I just, I want to pray for you and don't be looking around, keep your eyes closed for a moment. But if you feel like, you feel like you're in the nest and the floor is breaking up. And you're like, God, you've actually, some of you actually said it, Lord, why is this happening again? Why is that which was made me feel vulnerable and safe is now you are taking it away, God? It feels, uh, or maybe it's the devil. It's not the devil, it's God. It's a new season because he's destined to us to fly. If that's you, can you just put your hand up? I want to pray for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, thank you for these hands that have gone up for stirring. You can put your hands down. I, I thank you so much, Lord, for, this, that, for the way that you've designed us. You've designed us for not to stay in the place that we're at. And Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are the great counselor, but you're also the great comforter. I ask that you would, you would, each one of us would put our hand up for that stirring, would know your comfort today. And with the comfort, would know a confidence in you to fly. You know, the Bible Hebrew says, do not throw away your confidence, for it will be richly rewarded. What will be rewarded? Confidence. God rewards confidence. And some of you, as you're looking out the eel's nest, the nest and you're seeing the floor, some of you have done this before. You, you, you've, you've made this drop before. You, you, can, you know how to fly. You just didn't think you'd have to go through this again. 
The Lord says, go confidently. Go confidently. I'll catch you. I've destined you to fly. Some of you have flown and you stopped flying. The Lord, and the Holy Spirit just says, go with confidence. Other of you are, are in that molting season. It's not a stirring, it's more of a stripping away. I feel like I just can't. I don't know what's wrong with me. I feel all of those things. It could be physically, it could be spiritually, emotionally, mentally, relationally. Jesus. Holy Spirit, for all those who feel like there's just that stripping away, they feel they can relate to any of those seven things of a molting ego. Can you just put your hands up again, just if that's you? It's like, that's me, that's me. Many of you in this room, Holy Spirit, again, I just thank you. That when that you, you put your wings around us, you cover us with your wings, thank you. You feed us, you nurture us. Can I just say, some of you are screaming eagles. <laughs> You, you know in this next season, you, you're a screamer. If that's you, just I'm a know that I'm, I've been in that place, but I can scream over others. Can you just put your hand up over? Can you can keep your eyes closed? You just know that's me. I'm a screamer. I've got some screamers in the room. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for the screamers. I thank you for those who, who've been through this season, who get it. They've already got a language for it. <laughs> and where the enemy wants to cut in and take people out of the race, and wear them down with weariness, sure. anxiety, and putting all kinds of names. Lord, I thank you for the names and the language that you've given to those who've already gone through it. I thank you for those who've already taken that flight from renewed strength like the eagles. And Lord, I just speak over all the screamers mm. to see accurately where the need is, to see accurately where people need to be fed, to be see accurately where people need to be nurtured, to see accurately where people need to be watered. Accurately, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Amen. I just feel again, just going back to the beginning, that I think a lot about eternity. I don't know about you. I think about heaven a lot. Mm. I have crazy parents that live in Afghanistan. <laughs> they chose to live the rest of their lives. My dad's 78. And uh, I talked to him earlier this morning. And they're just crazy people. <laughs> and they said this, when you lose, like my first one, my mum said, I said, sir, I admire your passion. Mum, I said, she said, Daniel, do you know what passion means? And when my mum says that, I'm like, mm, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> she said, passion has got nothing to do with enthusiasm. It's not just a good American word, being passionate about a burger. She said, passion is the degree of difficulty we are willing to endure in order to reach our God-given goal. Passion, the passion of the Christ was about suffering for the joy set before him, which is us in the church. And so I just want to encourage you to be passionate is to go through something to endure the difficulty because it's worth it. And then my dad said this, the day you lose your sense of adventure, Death has already set it. Yeah. Don't lose your sense of adventure. Don't use this moment, this milestone, this marker to check out. To allow disappointment to overwhelm you so that the enemy can take you out. Paul writes to the church, one of the churches in the letters, he says, who cut in on you? You were running a great race. Who bewitched you, another translation says. 
But church, keep going. The, and I know, I'm not just saying this is a good rara, that it is true. The greatest days of this church are ahead. Because he always leads us from faith to faith. There's always more revelation. There's all more, always more truth. It's normally just us that are just slow. God's not slow, he's up for it. And as we get more hungry for him, when we more push in, God's going to bring you the right leader. He's going to bring you the right leader. And I just want to say, I'm not here because now you're a corporate coming and taking over. It's not, I just spent the day listening yesterday. I have, if you have predetermined counsel, you have predetermined ideas. I just came in and said, I want to listen. I want to listen to the leaders. I want to listen to the heart. I want to hear the history. I love reading. I'm just like, wow, God, this is an amazing church. But just because you're small in number doesn't mean you can't pack a powerful punch. <laughs> when I travel around the world, I think, oh, this is a British colony. It's like, wow, we did a lot for a little country. <laughs> you can do a lot as a little church. Small in number, but packing a, a, you can pack a powerful punch. And I just, I really mean this. God has got the right person to come and lead. He knows who he is, and I just want you to know, I don't. So, you know, I really don't. Sorry to disappoint you. I actually have no idea. I really mean that. But I, my confidence is, is your leaders are like, there's hope. My confidence is in the foundation that this beautiful, amazing couple sitting right here have laid. The best is ahead. God is not going to abandon you. And I will just, my promise is to stand with you and walk with you to see you through. <laughs> and that's my joy. My joy is that my dream is to see people's dreams come true. That's it. That's why it's not for you to live mine. <laughs> I don't have one, it's to hear yours. And hearing it yesterday, I was like, wow, this church has got a, a future. Mm. My parents have a, hold on with this, a poster in their downstairs bathroom they used to in England here. And it said, a hundred years from now, it won't matter what car we drove, what house we lived in, or how much was in our bank account, but the difference we made in the life of a child. That's generational thinking. Society grows where men plant trees they know they'll never sit in the shade of. Keep planting trees, church. Keep going, keep putting markers out. Keep going and sing, and you're, you've got, God is faithful. He will start bringing people, and they'll bring the right person to to lead for this, for the next, to the next marker, to the next generation, to the next chapter, however long it is. Amen. 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 Let's pray one more time. Thank you, Holy Spirit, again, just for this house. I thank you that you've called us. You do renew our youth like the eagles. And uh, Lord, wherever you, we, we, wherever we're at in our journey, I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you meet us there. And I ask that you would comfort us, whether we're in that stirring, whether we're in that stripping away, or whether we're screaming, <laughs> whether we're strength, being strengthened, and to scream against other over other people. I just thank you. I thank you for this house. Thank you for Steve and Larissa. Thank you for the elders, and thank you for this faithful family. And I thank you for the great future that you have for them in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Love you all. Thank you.